Welcome to Usability and Human Factors, Human Factors in Healthcare. This is Lecture C. In the last lecture, we examined a human factors approach to medical error. It differs from other ways of looking at error by an emphasis on the multidimensional nature of the problem and by focusing on a multi-leveled systemic approach. This lecture focuses on two central subjects, workload and medical devices. We present two studies on devices and expand on the construct of mental models in the context of human factors research. The objectives for this unit, Human Factors in Healthcare, Lecture C, are to apply methods for measuring mental workload and information overload, describe how human factors analysis can be applied to the study of medical devices. Workload is a very important explanatory variable in human factors analysis. Heavy workloads can have a range of consequences as characterized by Carrion and Gerses. They developed a classification scheme which identifies a five mechanisms for understanding the effects of a heavy nursing workload. For example, a nurse may have insufficient time to perform tasks safely, apply safe practices, or monitor patients, and this may even reduce their communication with physicians. Stress reduces the physical and cognitive resources to perform adequately. Errors in decision-making, such as a mistake in medication administration, can certainly be affected by workload issues. A heavy workload may even have a systemic effect. For example, a supervisory nurse may be too preoccupied with her own work to properly supervise nurses under her charge. This indirectly increases the possibility of human error. Mental workload is a multidimensional construct, in other words, a complex psychological concept which includes task demands, expectations regarding the quality of performance, and person effort. As task demands increase, so does perceived mental workload. The perception of degree of mental workload can vary across individuals. It is a difficult construct to measure. The NASA Task Load Index, or TLX, is a widely used multidimensional self-report rating procedure that provides an overall workload score based on a weighted average of ratings on six subscales, mental demands, physical demands, temporal demands, own performance, effort, and frustration. This slide defines each of the subscales. Mental demands can be operationalized as questions pertaining to how much mental and perceptual activity was required, e.g. thinking, deciding, calculating, remembering, looking, searching, etc. Was the task easy or demanding, simple or complex, exacting or forgiving? Physical demand refers to the effort exerted. Temporal demands can be answered by questions such as how much time pressure did you feel due to the rate or pace at which the tasks or task elements occurred. Effort, performance, and frustration level are additional subscales used to self-report. Effort refers to how hard did you have to work, mentally and physically, to accomplish your level of performance. Performance asks how successful do you think you were in accomplishing the goals of the task and how satisfied were you in accomplishing these goals. Finally, the frustration scale asks how you felt during the task. The first topic and the last set of slides pertain to medical devices. Medical devices include any healthcare product, excluding drugs, which are used for human beings for the purpose of prevention, diagnosis, monitoring, treatment, or alleviation of an illness. They are a common and much studied source of medical error. Oversight is provided by the Center for De Devices and Radiological Health, a division of the Food and Drug Administration. In the first series of lectures, we referred to some research on patient-controlled analgesics by Lynn and colleagues. A patient-controlled analgesic, or PCA, device is a method of pain relief which uses disposable or electronic infusion devices and allows patients to self-administer analgesic drugs as required. In other words, patients can determine when and how much medication they receive. The device is programmed by a nurse or technician, and this limits the maximum level of drug administration to keep the dose within safe limits. Some of these devices are known to be inordinately complex, and some have poor records of patient safety. This has resulted in some of these less safe devices being pulled from the market. 
Lynn and colleagues investigated the effects of two interfaces to a commonly used PCA device, including the original interface. Based on a cognitive task analysis, they redesigned the original interface so that it was more in line with sound human factors principles. Cognitive task analysis is a widely used method in human factors. It breaks a task into sets of subtasks or steps, e.g. a single action, a system responses, e.g. changes in the display as a result of an action, and inferences that are needed to interpret the state of the system. It is an effective measure for gauging the complexity of a system. For example, a simple task that necessitates 25 steps or more to complete using a given system is likely to be unnecessarily complex. On the basis of the Cognitive Task Analysis, or CTA, Lynn et al. found the existing PCA interface to be problematic in several different ways. For example, the structure of many subtasks in the programming sequence was unnecessarily complex. There was no overview of the entire task. There was a lack of external representations to guide the user. For example, a nurse would not know that he or she was on the third of five screens and was halfway through the task. The grouping of the controls was very confusing with some buttons serving two functions. In addition, the screen was rather small, which limited the kind of feedback that was possible. On the basis of the CTA analysis, they also redesigned the interface according to sound human factors principles. The old and new interfaces are illustrated on the slide. The new system was designed to simplify the entire process and provide more consistent feedback. For example, the system structure was simplified by minimizing the number of message display screens. In addition, choices were presented in parallel rather than serially. It's important to note that revised screen was a computer simulation and was not actually implemented in the physical device. They conducted a cognitive study with 12 nurses comparing simulations of the old and new interface. They found that programming the new interface was 15% faster. The average workload rating for the old interface was twice as high. The new interface led to 10 errors as compared to 20 for the old one. This is a compelling demonstration that medical equipment can be made safer and more efficient by adopting sound human factors design principles. Mobile health devices are becoming increasingly prominent and increasingly important as instruments of health care. They encompass a range of tools used by clinicians as well as patients. Although they are promising devices and have grown significantly in their capabilities and popularity, they still lack a stable and consistent interaction paradigm. This means that there is a lot of variability in the way they interact with the user. The focus of the next few slides is on a study conducted by Kaufman and colleagues of an advanced function glucose meter. The target population was older adults who comprise a rather large percentage of patients with diabetes. The study employed the LifeScan Ultra Smart Glucose Meter. It uses a hierarchical menu system as a mode of interaction. To accomplish a goal such as recording your present weight, you may have to negotiate up to five levels of screens. A hierarchical menu system offers a certain flow of control between human and device that is rather desirable in many ways. Interactive style provides visible options to the user. For example, the structure of the system can be fairly transparent given that there are a constrained path of operations. In other words, the interface guides the navigation process by allowing you to go in one of a finite series of directions. It may require minimal training, and the user can learn much of what is necessary by exploring the menu structure. One of the complexities is that it has breadth-depth trade-offs. A designer's choice is either to present more options on a given screen or require the user to, tra to traverse a greater number of screens before they are able to complete the task. All systems have these trade-offs, but the limited space available on such devices makes this problem all that more acute. The objective of this study was to assess the usability and learnability of LifeScan UltraSmart glucose meters, specifically the study focused on identifying aspects of device that either facilitated or impeded productive use of the device. 
The study also endeavored to determine whether older adults could develop basic competency with this device. Is this meter appropriate for older ad adults? Could they develop robust mental models of this device through interacting with it over a period of time? As discussed in various lectures, mental models are a construct that is widely used in human factors analysis. It roughly corresponds to a mental representation that is intended to answer the question of, how does this work? It allows us to reason about future states of a system and can also be used to reason backward to explain what just happened. A system that is similar to the user's mental model will prove to be predictable, reliable, and relatively effortless to use. Mental models are a product of many things, including our life experience. This slide presents a parallel study with the older adults using cell phones. The authors of this study, Zeifel and Bay, found that relative to younger adults, older adults had more inferior mental models of a telephone menu. This was associated with a lack of understanding of the hierarchical representation of the menu system. This inferior understanding was not surprisingly associated with poorer performance. Lack of a mental model can lead to disorientation in menu selection tasks and cause the user to follow suboptimal paths that will fail to lead to completion of the task. The glucose meter usability evaluation study included a cognitive task analysis performed by expert analysts and usability testing with five older adults. The subjects were given basic instructions by the investigators, tested, and then tested a second time after having a week to learn to use the system. In the study, all subjects experienced significant problems in the first testing sessions. Most subjects demonstrated some improvement in the second session but still experienced significant difficulties using the device. They exhibited a lot of trial and error behavior and perseverated, in other words, continued through fruitless searches that offered no possibilities for completing the task. The study reported a range of problems with the device that reflected violations of sound usability or human factors principles. This included limited visibility of the system state, which made it difficult for users to know where they were in the process of completing a task and inadequate prompts guiding the user to possible next steps or offering them the possibility to correct their errors. For example, if somebody erred by going down a wrong path, it wasn't easy to reverse one's steps and return to the earlier state. In conclusion, the glucose meter offers a wide range of resources to support self-management in patients with diabetes. However, mastery is associated with a steep learning curve, especially for older adults. Most users would experience difficulty in developing a sufficiently robust mental model to negotiate the complex menu structure. We have to acknowledge that this is a difficult design problem given the size of the screen and the limited interaction possibilities. For example, there is no keyboard or mouse. There is no question that usability testing can be used to glean more effective design solutions and weed out suboptimal design dimensions. This concludes Lecture C of Human Factors and Healthcare. In summary, as new and novel technologies proliferate, human factors will be expected to play an ever-increasing role. This lecture focused on the construct of workload and the study of medical devices. Workload is a complex construct that is measured in a number of ways. It is a concept that is important for understanding stresses and strains on human performance. This is an issue for both the study of error and the design or implementation of new systems. In particular, the dramatic growth of devices in healthcare requires a new level of scrutiny. We believe that human factors methods and principles can positively influence design choices. To summarize the unit human factors in healthcare, we considered the growing importance of human factors in health and other domains, briefly considered different domains of human factors in ergonomics. We discussed models of errors as proposed by James Reason and introduced a set of distinctions, including slips and mistakes. These distinctions help us categorize and better understand the factors that constitute medical error. We believe that human factors, methods, and principles can positively influence design choices. <laughs>